morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Jesse Suki, I'm the first deputy at the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Um, most recently from Office of Planning, I was the director there. So this is this is a great um, event and for the bill signing of House Bill 1714, which is the climate um, strategy bill for sea level rise and looking at climate adaptation statewide. Uh, it really takes a multi-agency approach to this and I think this is what the bill does. Uh, I'd like to thank the aquarium, the Waikiki Aquarium, and Dr. Rossiter for having us here today. Dr. Rossiter couldn't join us, but um, he was the one who arranged and helped us to do this. Laura Whitelock, though, is a volunteer coordinator, is with us this morning. She's up there somewhere. There she is. Thank you. The aquarium is celebrating 110 years, and it's the second oldest aquarium in the United States. And it's known for, among other things, coral propagation and education and research. And as our speakers come up and talk about the bill and why it's important to Hawaii, uh, coral propagation is an important component of adaptation as we uh, make ourselves more resilient to climate change. Uh, I'd like to welcome um, some of our representatives in the audience who won't get a chance to speak today, but um, are here to support this important bill, uh, Karen Awana, Representative Karen Awana. Also, Representative Henry Aquino. They were instrumental along with um, Representative uh, Chris Lee, who will be speaking um, in getting this bill through the legislature. And uh, not just passed with a good substantive approach for doing something about adapting to climate change, but also attaching money and resources to it, which is, you know, rare but fantastic. So they did, they did some good work. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have three speakers who are going to speak, uh, Governor Abercrombie, Representative uh, Chris Lee, and our Department of Land and Natural Resources, uh, Board of Land and Natural Resources Chair, William Isla. And so I'd like to invite the Governor up first. Thank you very much. I want you to know I did not steal his hat from Mr. Matthews over there. We we arrived at this uh, this uh, sartorial approach independently. Uh, aloha, everybody. Uh, I suppose it's uh, probably uh, a commonplace that that uh, people, most particularly elected officials say how happy they are to be at a particular time and place, uh, uh, for, as especially when it comes to a bill signing, but I, I can't imagine uh, that anyone uh, could be happier than those who have been associated with uh, addressing the question of uh, climate adaptation. Uh, I note the presence of uh, Jackie Kozak Thiel, who's our statewide sustainability coordinator and who has been uh, instrumental in, in taking our navigating change. This bill is in uh, uh, the uh, Hawaii's approach to adaptation. This is the foundation of our approach to the president's task force on climate preparedness and, and resiliency, and Jackie uh, has been representing us uh, on the task force, and will be coming up uh, the task force will be coming up with its recommendations to President Obama very, very shortly. And I want you to know that Hawaii has been taking the lead uh, on that task force in no small measure uh, due to the efforts of, of Jackie Thiel. So this, this uh, navigating change and adaptation plan, as well as uh, the initiative that took place early in our administration, a little summary of it here, the rain follows the forest. William Isle will be speaking shortly uh, with regard to, to this bill on, uh, on climate uh, adaptation, Hawaii's uh, Climate Adaptation Act. But this is part of the, the overall picture that has to be painted if we are going to, in fact, succeed in more than just a rhetorical approach uh, or even a theoretical uh, uh, desire uh, to come to grips with the questions of climate change. The watershed initiative, of course, is to ensure that we have fresh water that is available to the people of Hawaii in perpetuity. We have to deal with long-range long, long range, uh, questions, 
and this is what, uh, in fact, the legislature did. I wanted to quote, if I might, uh, just a little bit from my remarks uh, at, in, in the State of the State speech prior to the, uh, to the legislative session. I said uh, that we had to deal with the reality of climate change, which is becoming more and more evident across Hawaii and the, uh, across Hawaii and the planet. Our islands are especially vulnerable to the impacts, and we cannot wait to act. Uh, the State Office of Planning has been instrumental in coordinating efforts to update our Ocean Resources Management Plan. And uh, then we, I referenced the uh, Sustainability Coordinator with the authority to work across department lines for planning purposes. And I think that's represented in the good work that the legislature did then in, in, in reference to this. The Senate House Majority Package included a Hawaii Climate uh, Adaptation Initiative. That bill supported research, planning, and coordination. The Interagency Climate Council played a, a, a key role, I think, in support of the legislative initiative. And I'm very, very pleased that I, I that to, to state that the various forms that were involved and, and uh, to which the legislature responded created what I hoped at that time would be what I said was a, a climate change roadmap for Hawaii. I believe that, that this bill today provides uh, precisely that, that it is a roadmap for Hawaii to be able to deal with the questions of, of climate change and, and global warming. So it's a very, very uh, great uh, uh, pleasure for me uh, to be associated with Chris Lee, uh, William Island, and uh, uh, my friend Shannon, I want you to know, is here today. Shannon, no, Shannon, would please stand, stand up, because this is not just an initiative from the top. Uh, Shannon and other uh, uh, community-minded members, uh, other members of the community, uh, who have been uh, concentrating and focusing on climate change and, and, and our vulnerabilities, uh, began to work on this and actually had legislation passed in 2009, which unfortunately uh, was not able uh, to be um, followed through on in terms of the kind of funding and the, and the kind of uh, emphasis that was needed at the executive level. And uh, I want to assure everyone here uh, that that won't be the case now. The legislature has addressed this not only in terms of policy, but in, in terms of, of, of the roadmap for funding and implementation. And I'm, I'll be only too happy if given the opportunity uh, after November to, uh, to follow through on it. Uh, and so I'm very pleased to be here with Chris Lee, I think representing the, the legislature in this respect, and to say to all of you that this shows that when we do put our minds to it, uh, and our hearts to it, that regardless of, of whatever political challenges and difficulties or obstacles uh, might be encountered, they can be overcome. This is one area and in one instance in which the necessity of putting policy into law has actually taken place, and I couldn't be happier to be here with you all today to celebrate that fact. Thank you very much. is Representative uh, Chris Lee, and uh, like I said in my earlier comments, uh, Representative Lee was instrumental in getting this bill navigated through the legislature. Um, he, it was a ma ma majority package bill, which means he went around, he hustled, and he got all those signatures, and um, it made it out mostly um, unscathed with all the elements we needed um, to implement that uh, important measure. So, Representative Chris Lee. Thank you. I'd really like to acknowledge, um, on behalf of the House here today, Representative Henry Aquino especially, who was our policy coordinator putting together our majority package, who really, really uh, got things going for us. So mahalo, Henry, and thank you, Karen, for your help. You know, I um, was part of an ag leadership program over the past uh, couple of years, and one of the farmers I met was from the Big Island, and I ran to him actually pretty recently at the airport. I said, how's it going? And he said, well, frustrated. I said, why? He said, well, my, this guy's maybe about 65, and he said, my son is not going to take over the business. I said, that's tough. You know, competition these days is heated, and there's a lot that the legislature and the administration are doing to try and uh, help locally produce products. He said, no, 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 that's not it. It's water. 
I said, I know, you know, water is expensive, and uh, there's a lot of stream flow diversion going on, and there's a lot of issues that need to be worked out. He said, no, 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 that's not it either. And I said, well, what, what's the issue? And he said, it's just not raining. And this is one of those metrics that is indicative of not predictions to come and where climate change is going, but rather what we're measuring already today. And it's just one of many. Over the last hundred years, we've seen sea level here in Hawaii rise nearly eight inches. We've seen 30% more acidic content in the water than there was previously. Our rate of warming in the last 50 years has nearly doubled, and that's reduced our trade winds and our rainfall. And these are the challenges that we're going to have to face in the years to come. Ultimately, climate change could have a devastating impact on our local economy and our way of life if we continue to lose our beaches, our reefs, and our fresh water supply. But here, we are more threatened than any other state, but we are stepping up with the help of the administration and our other leaders and local community partners to try and tackle this and take it head on. And we can't afford to play politics with this any longer. And we can't let partisanship prevent us from taking action necessary to protect our future economy and way of life. We have to act today, and our kids should not have to pay that price because we refuse to take action. And so I really want to commend everybody who's really stepped up to the plate to take on this really serious issue that affects the future of our state. And that's why it's so important that we work together with Governor Abercrombie, who's been a champion, his administration, everybody who's worked on this, the House and the Senate leadership, and most of all, the overwhelming, overwhelming support, bipartisan support, putting this bill into law. Because this is something that affects everybody. And growing up here, we all know that our next generation is going to be here for a long time. I hope to be here 60 years down the road. And I don't want to end up paying 10 times as much to help combat the effects and adapt to the effects of climate change when we could pay so much less by just starting to plan today. And that's what this bill is really about. We have a chance to change our future. Planning ahead now will save billions of dollars for our next generation, and it will make us secure, safe, and give our next generation of children an opportunity to enjoy much of the same Hawaii that we have today. So I'm optimistic, and I really thank the governor more than anybody in his administration for stepping up and for all our colleagues and everyone that's going to take to continue to push this forward and make sure that we adapt so that we can continue to enjoy our way of life here. So on behalf of myself and my friend Jerry from the Big Island uh, and his son, mahalo, Governor. Mahalo, everybody. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Chair William Myla. Um, I started working with uh, DLNR just a few months ago and um, it's really a pleasure to watch uh, uh, Chair Ayala in action. Uh, he has a great rapport and great relationship with the community. He's navigating really complex and tough issues and the work and uh, priorities of the department. You know, you may not call it climate adaptation, but from day one, the kind of work and initiatives in that office is making us more adaptable, more resilient to the impacts and, you know, that it's going to have on the resources we depend on for a way of life, like Representative Lee said. So I'll call up. Chair Island. Hello, Mike Ako, everyone. Hello. Hey, all you have to do is just uh, remove the umbrella, feel the heat of the sun. It's early summer. It'll feel like this in September, October, and even into November. Climate change is here. All you have to do is walk outside and you will feel it. That's one of the beautiful things that's I get to experience because I have a governor that fully recognizes it. There's a legislature that is full of young folks. I don't know how you can speak speak any more passionately about what needs to be done, Chris. And that is what we need to do. Take the sage advice from somebody who's been around politically for a long time, add to that the exuberance of the youth, and collect, collect together a plan and move forward. I'll give you one quick example. About two years ago when we began the beach, beach nourishment uh, a little ways down the road here, there were many, many questions from everyone about, well, we don't know if this is going to work. We don't know what the currents are going to do. We don't know where the sand is going to go. We ran into some challenges with uh, the placement of the sand because of mechanical means. 
Uh, we worked through all of that, the hotels, the, the people in Waikiki understood exactly how important it was, for not only for Waikiki, but for the state of Hawaii. It is the economic engine of the state of Hawaii. We pull through, we are now looking at how the beach is um, adapting itself. If we listened to all the criticisms that had occurred during the, along the way, we would have not done anything. That is not an option for us here in Hawaii. Understanding that there's less rainfall for farmers, for the forest itself, the inhabitants of the ecosystem, that's why the governor took the initiative of Rain Follows the Forest. That's why we're working with ranchers and landowners to protect the dams and reservoirs that are up Malka so that we can make sure that we have water for future farmers, we can have recharge, we can have recreational opportunities for everyone. That is why we're following the water all the way down to where it meets the sea and we're working along like the Waikiki Aquarium with coral adaptation strategies. We're working on a coral nursery. Uh, the one thing that you can say about this administration and now this legislature when it comes to climate change is we not, are not only talking about it, we are doing something about it. And it's all of us together that uh, working together that can look at our children and our grandchildren in the face when we leave these positions of decision makers and be proud and be um, satisfied that we took the steps to be proactive to deal with climate change early. And that will make their job a lot easier. And so with that, I would like to uh, bring Jesse up because Jesse has a unique, uh, unique sense of now planning for climate change and now implementing for climate change. So Jesse, would you send us off? Thank you, Chair. Uh, you know, Chip Fletcher from the university has some models about sea level rise. Um, if you look at the predictions of, of well, not you know, modeling for sea level rise, the correct term, uh, they recommend planning for 2050, one foot sea level rise, planning for uh, 2100, three feet. But that's, that's just to be on the safe side. It could be much higher, you know, it could be a little lower. So to put that into perspective, my son, he just turned one. So in 2050, when sea level rises at one feet, he'll be about 40. And if he has children like I did around 40, his children are gonna experience, be about 50 years old in 2100. So we're not talking about some kind of far off esoteric concept of what the, what the world might be. We're talking about right now. And what we're doing now with this, this adaptation policy and the work that others have done before, uh, on uh, adaptation is making an investment today and am amortizing the cost of these impacts, what these impacts are going to have out into the future and on uh, future generations, our children and their children. And you know, we have a moral obligation to do that. You know, the, the, this blue globe's been spinning around the earth for about four and a half billion years. Um, in the past few hundred years since the Industrial Revolution, we've dumped more carbon uh, and greenhouse gases into the environment than any other place in history. Um, so we, we, we need to do something about it. We have a moral obligation to do something about it. And I think that um, what we're doing now, these policies supported by the governor, um, supported by our legislature, and the, the, the folks who are going to do the work, like uh, Sam Lemel, <laughs> Office of uh, Conservation and Coastal Lands, and Jackie, who's going to help us coordinate statewide, and the Office of Planning. We have Natalie Morris in here from Office of Planning. Uh, you know, we're all going to be involved because it's not just one thing. It's not just about um, it's it is an environmental issue, but it's not just that. It's also about how we develop our built environment. It, it's about uh, where we put our airports, how we develop our roads. Um, it's it health impacts. You know, it's all of these things, and this bill is about all of that. The first step, they see level rise, but it sets up a framework for addressing these other multi-dimensional dynamic issues that uh, we have to make an investment in today to, uh, for our children tomorrow. My son. So thank you very much. And uh, the next part of this event is, let's see, oh, governor will come up and uh, call up some people for the bill signing. I'll call them up, sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rep Representative Lee, of course, Chair Isla, um, Jackie, our State Sustainability Coordinator, Sam Lemmel, he's our Administrator for Office of Conservation and Coastal Lands, 
Leo's not here, but if Natalie could come up from the Office of Planning, um, Chip Fletcher, um, who is the Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, UH School of Ocean Earth Science and Technology, and does, did a lot of climate modeling for us. <laughs> and our representatives, you should come up as well. Yeah, Karen and... Shannon. Shannon. Like Governor said, Shannon worked hard on that uh, 2009 bill. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 